Partner at Grand Thornton, Richard Peterkin, laments the impact the COVID-19-induced recession has on employment. However, he says the economic crunch so far has not resulted in total economic ruin. Interestingly, um, you know, in discussing this with other people in, in the financial industry, the, the general feeling, and this has borne out, is that the banks were not going to put people into, into receivership or bankruptcy. It made no sense. Because normally when you do that, then you try to sell assets and you can't sell assets. Nobody's buying. So what the banks have been doing, to their credit, is being, um, first of all, they had the loan moratorium that assisted everybody with loans. Second, on a case-by-case -case basis, I'm sure they assisted clients um, that needed, you know, a little, whether it was an additional overdraft, a little longer period of time to sort things out. So I am not aware that there have been any additional bankruptcies or receiverships, and I think the banks are looking at what they call monitoring and working with their clients to make sure that hopefully they will survive and become good clients in the future. In March 2020, banks sought to ease the financial burden on clients by providing three- to six-month loan moratoria. Now that September has arrived and the time frame is almost up, Peterkin provides insight into available options in the possible absence of a further extension of the deferrals. What I gather, and this is by no means guaranteed or done, is that they are discussing the possibility of extending that. Now, it will depend on whether they can come to agreement, uh, what central bank can work out, because bear in mind, if people aren't paying their loans for that long, their loans technically become non-performing. And that's an issue that central bank and, and, and the banks have, even though they're not non-performing, because this is being done deliberately. It's not a case that they weren't paying. They were, not, they were told they didn't have to. So all of that has to be worked out. And, and I guess if it's successful, we will hear the banks will, in fact, give an extension. As to how long, whether it's to the end of December or another six months, I don't know. In addition to that, I think banks are working with their individual clients um, who are good clients and trying to work out other arrangements with their loans that would put them in a position where they, they would not be in difficulty and would survive what might be the next difficult months. In a previous interview with News Force, bus driver Vianney Jacob spoke of the financial hardships facing many in the profession. Most of the people who are paying about $2,500 on a bus, they cannot afford to pay that money to the bank and then take care of the household. All of them are complaining. It's off the board that they, they cannot afford. People that probably can cushion a little are people with no debts. All sectors of the economy have been affected by COVID-19, especially the travel and tourism industry. The island remains heavily reliant on tourism, with many displaced workers receiving state-backed income support through the NIC or the government after losing their livelihoods. Pitakin is not holding out hope for a strong rebound this year. From what I gather from the people involved in tourism, the occupancies are still very low, 25%. They don't see it getting much higher over the next couple of months. The feeling is perhaps it may take us until January before we actually see numbers get up to 50. And they don't start to break even until they're 60%. A sitting of the House Assembly scheduled for Tuesday, September 15th, was postponed, sparking speculation about the fate of the state of emergency, loan moratoria, and the future of the income support program. Now, many wait with bated breath on what will happen come the end of September as one of the worst global crises in recent memory continues. Sulaj Alfred, HDS News Force.